Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Fergie. Have you ever wanted to use sound or music in your app just like this? No problem, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Let's get started. So here you can see my design all laid out in Adobe XD with all of the screens that I want my app to contain, as well as the app icon, a loading screen and a splash screen. So starting off with our home page, my design is less of a traditional menu because when they click on these tiles here, they'll go to that specific section of the app. The first section is de-stressing. It is a breathing exercise. So the user can tap to start when they're ready. Then they'll follow this Lottie animation, which does the four count box breath. The next section I have is sleep sounds. So this is where we're going to start using the Bravo tags for using sound. So I have a screen here that will list all of the different sounds. Now this screen, I'm going to be pulling in the sounds from an API database connection. And then on this screen, we're simply telling that sound to play. Uh, we can also pause it and see the timer counting for how long we've listened to that sound for. And there's also a little loading Lottie animation just here. Then the final section of the app is about focus sounds. And this is again using the same design as sleep sounds, so pulling in a list of sounds. But this one I'm doing a little differently. I'm using the URL for the specific soundtrack within my Bravo tag. So this is why I have the specific screen for each sound here. So this is the non-API version. And I'm gonna go through and show you both. So let's get started. Let's go back to the beginning of our app and start to go through all of those Bravo tags. I'm gonna open up my layers panel so you can see all of the details. I've got my home screen here. And you'll see I have a container grouping everything. Now, the most important thing is to never forget your containers. Everything needs to be inside a container. It could be one container or it could be multiple that stack on top of one another. That is how Bravo knows to do the layout correctly. So then you'll see I have the tiles just grouped here into different sections with the design. And there's not really any tags here apart from my component SVG. And that is so that Bravo knows how to render and display my illustrations here. So that's just component SVG for any illustrations. The next screen is for the breathwork. So again, as you can see, my design is fairly simple, but I have a container and inside of this, I have my start button, my close button, which is in the top here. I have again, my illustration with the SVG tag. Everything else you can just leave as it is. We don't need any particular tags here. And then when the user taps the start button, they'll go to this screen here with the Lottie animation. And we need to make sure that we add the Lottie tag onto this rectangle here that has the JSON URL for that specific animation. Now I use the Lottie plugin within XD, so you can see just here. If I were to type in breathing, this is the one that I found. I can insert that as a Lottie and it goes here. You can also view this on the web to get the JSON URL. And you'll see this is the animation that I'll be using within my app. If I scroll down just here, you'll see this is the .json link that you need to copy. And then you simply paste that back into the layer name here inside of the tag component and then Lottie and then the URL. The next screens are the sleep sounds. So this is where I'm using two containers, one to contain all my sort of header information along with my illustration, which again has the component SVG tag. And then I have a second container. And this is where I'm creating a list of all of my sounds. So you can see I've got how long is this sound, the sound name, play button, the icon, and then this is just the area that that takes up. And you can see I've called that sound list container. And then what we'll do when we sync this with Bravo is link this list item to each database list item for the sounds that we have. Now for our second screen where we're actually gonna be playing that sound, we have quite a few tags that we're going to need to use. Firstly, everything is grouped within one container. And I also like to use the aspect ratio screen tag. That just makes sure that no matter what device my users are using, this will fit nicely to fill the screen correctly. Next, we have our play and pause buttons. Now I have just used icons for these and you could do the same. I just use the icons for design plugin 
you can search for what button you may need and it will come up with these icons that you can readily use. So because it has the little pen icon, we know that it's a path, which means we need the component SVG tag, along with action play for the play button and action pause for the pause button. Now you'll see I have both of them on the artboard here as being visible, but don't worry because when a sound is playing, it will automatically switch to the pause button. And when you pause a sound, it will automatically switch to the play button. So there's nothing too complicated you need to do here. I then have my audio times. So I have the total time for the audio and then also the current time. Now the total time is something I have logged in the database and we'll be connecting via the API. And then to know how much of this sound we have played, we're going to want to use audio current time. That's this tag just here. That means that as the sound is playing, this is going to be counting along the time. I then have the same close button. Again, I have another Lottie animation here. And you'll see I have another tag just before I have the Lottie tag here. So if I expand this out so you can see, we've got the usual component Lottie and then the JSON URL here for our Lottie tag. And just before that, I've got audio loading. So because I am streaming this audio from an API database, the app might need just a moment to connect to that file to play the audio. So to give the user the feedback that, yep, the sound is loading, we have a little pulsating animation that happens here so the user knows not to just keep pressing the play button. Sound name as it is, we'll bind that with the API data. And again, with my background, because we're being an illustration, I have my component SVG tag. Moving on to the next part of the app, it is basically the same layout. I've just changed the colors and the illustrations to represent that this is for focus and not for sleep. And this is where I'm using sounds that are not via API. So this is where you can put the URL link for the sound in your Bravo tag here in your XC document. So as before, I have my header container and then I have my sounds. So if I just expand this bottom one here, you can see I've literally copied the artboard, that's why all my naming is exactly the same. But for each sound, I'm needing to duplicate this group here. So if I wanted to have another sound, I would duplicate this and move it down here and give it the new name. So when the user clicks on one of these sounds, they'll go to that specific screen to play that sound. So this is where the difference is. You'll see that I still have my one container, still have my background illustration with my component SVG. I still have the audio loading tag here, which is our animation to let the user know it's about to play. But the main difference is here in the play tag. So if I just open this panel, instead of putting just action play, you'll see we have the MP3, and it's very important that it needs to be a .mp3 URL to where this sound is going to be played from. So I'm using a link here to a stock sound website to play this audio. And of course, because we know that the play icon is a path, we'd still need that SVG tag here, component SVG. The pause button is exactly the same. The difference here is that we have audio total time because we're not pulling this in from API. This will take it from the MP3 once it has loaded it. And then we also still have our audio current time. Now, once you have all of your screens created and you've put in all of the Bravo tags, we need to go into prototype mode and the first important thing to do is set this home screen. So we need to tell Bravo what is the first screen to load up. So you can see, just click this little house button that will appear and you'll know it's set correctly because it will turn from gray to blue. So for example, I can just select it like that. Next up, you will need to use prototyping mode to create all of the links between your screens. So here's the example, when my user clicks on this de-stress de tile, they're gonna go through to this section of the app and then from this screen here, if they tap the start button, they'll go over here into the breathwork. If they click the close button, they'll go back to that menu screen. Similarly, if they click on the sleep tile above, that brings them down here. If they click on a sound, it goes to the playing sound screen. If they close it, they go back to the menu here. If they close sleep sounds and exit this, they'll go back to the main menu. And then where you're using sounds where the URL is in the tag and you have each of those individual screens, you're gonna to need to make sure these are all linked up. So adventure goes to adventure, summer goes to summer, and chill would, for example, go to chill. So you're having to create these connections individually, whereas with using 
an API source, you're just doing it the once because it's going to work it out for you once we bind the data. And we'll do that in the part two video, so be sure to come back and watch that one. So once all of your links are set up and correct, we're just going to make sure everything is linked somewhere. We can see that all of our links here are correct. We can go to our Bravo plugin. So just go to the plugins panel here. You can click this little brick icon in the bottom left hand corner. If you don't already have the Bravo plugin, you can click the plus icon, which will bring you to the plugins market. And then you can just search for Bravo Studio and hit install. Once you've installed the plugin, open it, log in. It will prompt you to do this via the browser. And then you can either create your app, so give it a name and hit the create button. Or since I've already created it, I'm just gonna be pressing update. And it just takes a couple of seconds to send this to Bravo. And now success, we know that our app is uploaded and we're gonna go into Bravo Studio to make sure that it is all there correctly. So here I've logged into the Bravo Studio dashboard. I can see my collection of apps and I can see the one that we have just created. Clicking on that will bring me to this view here where I can see all of the screens. None of them are missing, it is all as expected. And if you want to know how I'm going to be using an API connection to play my sounds, come back and watch part two where we're going through that in detail. So now let's test it out using the Bravo Vision app. So here I can see that my main screen has loaded up correctly as expected. So let's go through each section of our app and test it out. First up, de-stress. Let's tap the start button to begin our breathing exercise. And we can see that our Lottie animation is successfully loaded and playing through on a loop as expected. Next up, let's check our snooze sleep sound section. I can see that all of the sounds have correctly pulled from the API database. I can select one of them and I should now be able to play it as well. and pause and close out of this sound. So let's go back to our main menu and check our unwind focus sound section. We can see that's the list we created in Adobe XD. And if I select adventure, it should take me to the adventure sound screen. And I should now also be able to play this sound. I can pause it and we can also see that our counters are working correctly. Now you know how to use sound and music within your app. Come back for part two where I'll show you how to connect and play music from a database. See you next time.